Hey folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the new Merida 140. Now the Merida 140 is designed to be a versatile all-round trail bike. It features 29-inch wheels, a 150mm travel fork and 143mm of rear travel. And that puts it into a similar space as the new Trek Fuel EX, the Scott Genius and the Specialized Stump Jumper Evo. Available in both alloy and carbon variants, the 140 frame is actually identical to the 160 frame, though a shorter stroke shock and a fork reduces the travel. Merida then distinguishes the two bikes further by fitting faster rolling tyres and lighter duty suspension to the 140. Otherwise, the Flex Day suspension platform is the same. It relies on a small amount of flex through the seat stays and a compact linkage to drive the rear shock. Inside the linkage is a discrete flip chip which allows you to set up this bike as a mullet with a 27.5 inch rear wheel. Now Merida says the geometry is maintained between the two settings, though rear travel does increase to 151 millimeters when running the 27.5 inch setting. Like its bigger sibling, the Merida 140 features some very progressive geometry. We've got a 65 degree head angle and a very steep 80 degree seat tube angle. On our mid-size test bike, there's a 480 millimeter reach and on all frame sizes, you'll find a 437.5 millimeter rear center length, though this does shorten to 434 millimeters in the mullet configuration. There are five frame sizes in the Merida 140 and all of them have been designed with short seat tubes and low stack heights. And the idea there is it allows you to more easily upsize to get a longer reach. The bigger sizes then come with a higher rise handlebar to lift up the effective stack height. We've also got a unique 230mm travel dropper post which is adjustable all the way down to just 30mm of travel. The idea is that you insert the post fully into the frame and then adjust the travel to suit your preferred saddle height. There are six models in the Merida 140 lineup and prices will start at a bit over $3,000. Our test bike sits one step down from the top. This is the Merida 148000 and the current retail price on this is 9,000 Australian dollars. This bike comes with a full carbon frame and a Fox Performance Elite 36 fork and a float DPS shock. There's a SRAM GX axis drivetrain with carbon cranks, a Shimano XT brake set with 203 millimeter rotors front and rear. There's a race face turbine R30 alloy wheel set and Maxxis tires with a 2.5 inch Minion DHF on the front and a 2.4 inch dissector on the rear. Confirmed weight for our Merida 140 test bike is 14.43 kilos, and that's without pedals and with the tire set up tubeless. Now that's over half a kilo lighter than the 160 we recently tested, and that comes down to the lighter fork and shock, and also the lighter tire casings. We've got an EXO casing on the front and an EXO Plus on the rear. Now if you'd like to know more about sizing and how we set up the suspension on this bike, there is a load more info in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. In there we've also got a detailed comparison between the 140 and the 160, so make sure you click the link in the video description below to check it out. On the trail, we've been thoroughly impressed with the versatility of the Merida 140. The geometry is similar to the 160, though the shorter travel platform gives it a stouter and more responsive feel, so you can really throw it around. It performs exceptionally well on flowy terrain, and also trails that have a bit more pedaling involved. The supportive suspension and efficient pedaling performance gives it a load of enthusiasm when you need to hustle, and it doesn't suffer from excessive bobbing during out of the saddle efforts. Despite this sporty feel, there's still good traction and bump absorption, which allows the rear wheel to track over rocky and rooty terrain. It's not as plush as the Stump Jumper Evo, though it's definitely smoother and more compliant than the Fuel EX. We reckon Merida has hit the sweet spot between designing a bike that's plush enough that you can push hard on without sacrificing efficiency. We also like that the Flex Stay design helps to save weight and improve lateral rigidity, and it also makes the back end simpler as there are fewer pivots and bearings to worry about. And even though there's no pivot at the dropout, the Flex Stay design is hardly noticeable compared to a standard suspension design. It is very smooth and active, which makes sense as Merida claims there is minimal flex required through the seat stays to begin with due to the way that it's design the pivot layout. There's also good progression to resist bottoming out on hard landings, and it helps to keep the shock riding higher in its travel during sustained hits. 
The geometry on the 140 makes it feel quite nimble and combined with the relatively low weight contributes to the overall agility and fun factor. The front end is on the lower side so taller riders and those frequenting steeper terrain will likely benefit from fitting a higher rise handlebar. We didn't find it compromised too much on stability or comfort though and it certainly encourages you to push harder on the climbs. And on that note, the longer reach and that super steep seat angle puts you in a fantastic pedaling position whenever you're going uphill. Now as you'd expect, the Merida 140 isn't as planted as the 160 when you're bombing down fast and chattery trails. Now this can be put down to the steeper head angle and the lower stack height, which means it isn't quite as stable or as predictable at higher speeds. You could get more stability by upsizing, but if you are thinking along those lines, you might be better off at looking at the longer travel 160. Now if this was our bike, we consider setting it up as a mullet to get a little bit more rear tire clearance when riding down steep descents. That would increase rear travel and we consider fitting a 160mm air spring in the fork, which would lift up the front end and slacken out the head angle a little bit further. Now while most of the parts on our test bike have performed well, the dropper post has been a slight disappointment. It does work fine, but it's not as smooth as a Fox Transfer or a RockShox Reverb, and the travel adjust mechanism doesn't work, which means we couldn't set the travel any lower than 230 millimeters. We had exactly the same issue on our 160 test bike, so while we like the concept of the adjustable dropper post, we remain unconvinced about the execution. Also like the 160, we've had some creaking from the headset. Now Merida has informed us that it's developed a new split headset design which is manufactured by Acros, and that will come on newer production bikes. The updated headset will be available for existing 140 and 160 customers, so it's good to see a solution for those who have experienced the same issues that we have. Those problems aside, we have to say that the new Merida 140 is a fantastic example of a modern do-it-all trail bike. It's a calm and comfortable climber thanks to its efficient pedaling performance, that uber steep seat angle and its respectable weight. It manages to balance this with plenty of grip and control on the descents, while being more agile and responsive than its bigger sibling. The result is a versatile trail bike that is a load of fun to ride whether you're a new or experienced rider. It's also great value too, and the wide range of models means there's likely to be a bike to suit most budgets. Now as mentioned before, there is a load more info in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you click the link in the video description below if you're keen to check it out. Otherwise I hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!